I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. <coughs> Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Opens Meetings Act. Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Uh, please join us while Mr. Hubert leads us in the invocation and Mr. Williams in the pledge. Feel free to join me if you like. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that we have, we have had. We are grateful for this opportunity that we have to meet in this building to discuss the issues of Conroe Independent School District. We, we ask that thy, thy spirit will be upon us, that we will have the 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 children's best interests at heart and the students' best interests at heart and our teachers and, and all those involved with Conroe ISD. We ask you to be with us this day and all those that are with us in this room. We ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our pledge of allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Hubert. Mr. Williams? Um, item 2A, Special District Recognition, District Support Staff Ambassador Awards, Dr. Stockton. We are very excited tonight to recognize some very special people uh, that work in this building. I'm going to ask Dr. Hines to come and introduce those recipients. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. <clears throat> As you know, the Conroe Independent School District is fortunate to have so many hardworking and dedicated staff members that support our outstanding schools. Tonight, we want to take a brief moment to recognize just a few of those valued members of the CISD team. It is an honor for me to introduce to you the 2017 Ambassador Award recipients for our administrative departments. Each of tonight's recipients exemplifies excellence and provides exceptional service for the district. As I introduce our recipients, if you would please come forward and remain up front until we have all of our recipients up here. And I'm going to begin with tonight uh, from Athletics Department, Sandra Richardson. Sandra Richardson has been an administrative assistant for the CISD Athletic Department for the past five years. And during that time, she has worked very, every aspect of the athletic department from assisting with the management of the departmental budget and making sure the game officials get paid to ordering supplies and materials and just keeping everything organized. Some of you may know Sandra from attending football games at Moorhead Stadium, where she coordinates all the workers for all the football contests at that venue. Sandra handles each of her athletic department duties with her always bright and positive personality. She always has a smile on her face, and she always goes above and beyond in all that she does. Thank you, Sandra. Next, we have Sandra Vaughn from the Curriculum and Instruction Department. Sandra Vaughn is a person that puts her heart and soul into all that she does. She has worked for CISD for eight years and has supported response to intervention, positive behavioral interventions and support, our CPI, uh, secondary language arts and languages other than English, advanced placement, and special education. She is amazing at budgets, scheduling, keeping things on track, learning new things, and working to maintain all other aspects of our department. She takes initiative, is detail-oriented, and does an exceptional job. Sandra has been a mentor to new administrative assistants, works collaboratively with staff from all the departments, and provides guidance to others to help all of CISD. She is always ready to step up and take on any new task, but most importantly, Sandra cares about people. She is patient, she is kind, and she takes care of those around her. She loves her dad, her husband, and her dogs, and we are <laughs> grateful for her each and every day. So thanks, Sandra. <laughs> Next up, we have Patricia Morais from the Finance Department. <clears throat> Patricia has been an asset in various positions during her 10 years with the district, and prior to joining the Finance Department as an Accounts Payable Clerk in 2013, Patricia served at Derichin. 
She is highly regarded in the finance department because she always has a positive attitude and a smile on her face. She is always open to change, always open to learning new things. She is a hard worker, and she is detail-oriented, which is a good quality in the world of finance. <laughs> <laughs> and we are truly blessed to have Patricia as part of our outstanding team. Next, from the Human Resources Department, we have Sandy Facemeyer. Sandy Facemeyer began work in Human Resources Department one year ago as our Employees Records Specialist. And she joined the team at a time when the department was initiating, she probably would have thought twice if she knew this, <laughs> one of the biggest projects to date, which is going paperless with our employee records. Mm -hmm. um, and Sandy was instrumental in organizing the HR team and the purging of old documents, the returning of official documents to employees, and moving to a totally online system. Sandy comes to work with a smile on her face every day and exemplifies the work ethic and positive attitude of an outstanding Conroe Independent School District employee. Thank you, Sandy. And finally, we have from the technology department, Doug Holland. <laughs> Doug has steadily advanced his skills and has held many positions in the technology department. He's been with Conroe Independent School District since 2002 when he began as a technology warehouse driver. In 2003, he took a position as network technician. In 2007, he was promoted to work with server team as a systems IT specialist. A few years later, he began splitting his time in between the server team and the security media department. In 2014, he accepted a position as the full-time media and security supervisor. He is currently handling all the day-to-day -day activity with all of our security systems, the cameras, and the media within the district. On behalf of the, all of the Board of Trustees, just individually and collectively, we want to just tell each and every one of you just how proud we are of you and how appreciative we are of everything that you do to make this district great. Um, you know, the common thread that I, I heard throughout is, is just such a positive attitude, uh, just uh, encouragement, and uh, just your optimism in coming to work every day. And I know that just helps everybody raise up everybody around you and, and makes our district better. Uh, I looked up, and, and actually, ambassador comes from uh, the Latin word ambactus, uh, which means servant. And uh, you guys are truly examples of servant leadership, mm -hmm. of how you serve others. And it's really just uh, inspiring to all of us on the board uh, that we have a team made up of, of individuals like yourselves that just put others before yourself and, and truly exemplify servant leadership in your everyday duties and, and we're just so thankful and appreciative for, for all of you. Has anyone registered to address the board? Uh, no one has signed up. All right. Um, we're going to take a brief moment and we're going to go ahead and skip to item uh, 9A if no one else has an objection and do the naming for the principal of Grand Oaks High School. Dr. Stockton? Well, it's my uh, privilege tonight to recommend the first principal of Grand Oaks High School, the 
the uh, head grizzly. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. And we are excited, and, and um, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, this person for the last 20 years. He, he, he's here. <laughs> Somebody's assuming something out there. <laughs> now, I've had the pleasure of working with Dr. Povich the last 20 years and have seen him do such a great job in every position that he's been in, and I am very confident that he is going to open this school with a roar. Um, so oh, with, oh, that, wow. with that, I'm going to recommend Dr. Chris Povich for the position of principal of Grand Oaks High School. All right. Madam President, I uh, move that we elect Chris Povich. Dr. Chris Povich is principal at the Grand Oaks High School. Second. All right. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. You guys. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, thank you. Um, being the big grizzly, I guess. <laughs> Get used to that. Well, right now, you're the only grizzly. <laughs> the only grizzly. Oh, we're working at York. Don't worry. We already got uh, one of our counselors, Carol Ann West, already has our grizzly gear going there for York. So I didn't even know they were done yet, but I guess they are. Um, this is an honor to stand before you tonight. Um, I just completed my 20th year in Conner ISD. Um, very blessed to work for such a great district uh, with your support, approval. I'm excited to be the first principal at Grand Oaks High School. Um, and I would like to also take this time to thank my loving wife of 24 years, Victoria Waters, my boys Brandon and Joseph, and the rest of the Waters family and friends and co-workers. And <laughs> Peter Christmas are all here tonight. Thank you. That's about as quiet as he's ever been. So. <laughs> The furniture has made it so far, so we're doing good. So, uh, thank you. So, uh, yeah, there are two and nine are my boys back here. And so, um, delighted to live in this district, work for this district, and have my kids go to school here. Um, I look forward to the future of sharing the successes of Grand Oaks community with you, of our students and our staff. And uh, thank you again for your everyday dedicated support of all our students in Connor ISD. Go Grizzlies. <laughs> <laughs> just for future reference. <laughs> you just saved the best for last. Right? Is that what he said? Congratulations. All right, item three, consent agenda. I've had a request to pull item I. Are there any other items we need to pull? All right. Um, then if I could have a motion to approve the consent agenda minus item I. And so move. Motion to approve. Second. All right. All those in favor or discussion? All those in favor. Opposed? All right. Item uh, I, consider award of RFP 17-01-01A, Contracted Educational Services, Professional Development, and Educational Consulting Services. Uh, Mr. Sanders? Yes. I just ask that this one be pulled uh, because of the size of the contract. I just wanted as a board for us to be transparent about that and, and, and no, nothing unusual. I uh, would just like to hear a little bit more okay. about those services and then we can vote on it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the majority of these contracted services are special ed services, which is why the, the amount is so great when we look at it over the years. So what we're doing is we're qualifying our vendors to make sure that they meet qualifications and they're being evaluated by our special ed director. Um, so that we're not just using any any vendor. So she's actually evaluating each of these responses and awarding them based on on the, that criteria. So and as I recall, I think there were 37 or eight separate contracts. Is that right? Correct. That were, Correct. That we're really yes, awarding. Sir. Yes, sir. So the dollar amount is large, but when you based spread on it out, whole, 37 right. different contracts. Correct. 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 And what we're doing, what we've done is we're. It's, it's open, so we're, we're taking to bring you guys a new group each month as they're responding based on the needs, because the needs change. There's, so that's, why, that's how we're doing that. Okay. okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right. Motion to approve. Motion to approve on the I second table. the motion. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. 
motion passes. Item 4A, except for information, the naming process for the new Connor ISD campus. Dr. Stockton. Okay, it's that time of year again. Uh, Dr. Nell, if you'll come and present that item. Well, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It is that time of year again, and it's an exciting time for us as we look to open uh, another new campus in the, in the near future. And uh, rather than do a, a presentation as I was going to prepare tonight, I decided what I would just show you is our public-facing website, and it has all the information that I would have shared you. So I think it'll be nice for everyone to see the great work that uh, Ms. Blakelock's doing on our website. So if you go to the main Conroe ISD webpage, and right there on the very front, you see the big orange box uh, on public input salt for the naming of Flex 18. And uh, just to remind you of where Flex 18 is, this will be a new intermediate school in the Grand Oaks feeder. Uh, and as you look here, it's the lower right-hand corner, kind of back here uh, near Grand Oaks High School and, and not too far from the complex that houses York and Cox and Snyder. I'm sure we'll see updated pictures of this uh, facility from Mr. Foster here in just a few minutes, but here's a, the rendering of the front of that building. And uh, our process begins tonight as we we kick this information off and over the next month up until august 11th we will be seeking public input um, on the naming process and so we will ask the public to give us their suggestions and why um, but as those suggestions flow in through the website they come to myself and to uh, miss blakelock and we'll compile those and make those available to you uh, we'll ask our principals to share the link to this so that we get that out to all the school community uh, we'll also ask our local media to help us share uh, this information and we've had great success in the past when we put this on our social media pages so we will put this on our twitter and facebook and get it out there and and that tends to really generate a lot of responses but we'll come back in august and share with you the names that have been submitted and then uh, we'll return in september as an action item uh, at your pleasure to uh, officially name the school <clears throat> This is just to show you um, what this process looks like. It's a nice form on the web page. Folks can go in and include uh, their name and email so that if we have questions, we can go back and ask them to, for more information. And then we give them uh, an opportunity here to um, give us their rationale, which is always helpful uh, as they make a suggestion for a name. So the process begins this evening. And uh, like I said, it'll extend over here the next month. And it's a great opportunity. It's a, as you know, it's a, big deal to name a school it's something that we take very seriously and, and we do appreciate the public's input wonderful all right any questions no. all right thank you dr thank Null. you uh item 4b capital improvements update dr stockton miss foster would you come present that item i know we had a busy summer so please update us <clears throat> president bush members of the board and dr stockton it's my pleasure to update you on our capital improvements that we have underway throughout the district <clears throat> i'm going to start with the network operations center the project is on its current schedule and we're in the middle of the complex transition from the old data center to the new data center so that process is moving along uh, well and as expected um, just to kind of show you what it looks like on the outside of the building where we have the air conditioning equipment and uh, preserving preservation of one of the trees nice trees on our site on the inside, the, the equipment is starting to populate the racks, uh, so it's starting to look like a, a live and functioning data center uh, more and more every day. As we're moving out of the old technology area, we're also recovering those offices, so we're moving in behind them to freshen up and reestablish uh, re those areas for uh, new staff as we grow as a school district. Our life cycle project, which is the big project for the summer, uh, starting with Buckaloo Elementary, where we uh, replaced their gym floor, so that floor is complete and looking nice. Uh, at Bush Elementary, where we replaced the roof, uh, the roof of that building is essentially complete. There's a few details to wrap up, but they're going to be cleaned up and gone in the next uh, week or so. At Galatis, we're in much of the same position. There's a few details there to clean up and move out, but it is uh, nearing its completion on the roof structure. Inside, we're replacing the gym floor like we have at a number of our campuses this summer. And we're also working on some carpet in the library uh, at, at Galatis. <coughs> College Park, uh, we refinished and restriped the competition gym floor uh, on a normal life cycle schedule. Uh, we're also working on refinishing the tennis court facility for that campus, and that progress is moving along well. At Conroe High School, we are also in the middle of refinishing the tennis courts. 
uh, and we recently completed the uh, refreshing of the track surface to uh, make our lines uh, more visible and usable for the next uh, several seasons. At Creighton Elementary, where we're uh, replacing the uh, end-of-life parking lot, so you're looking at a, <laughs> at a photograph of the bus loop uh, where the new, newly placed concrete is in place, and in the front of the building where the new front parking lot is in place. We're at a point now where we're down to curbs and sidewalks and islands, so that project is moving along just as we had anticipated. At David Elementary, uh, we replaced their gym floor, and it is complete and shiny. At Ford Elementary, we also replaced their gym floor, and it is striped and shiny as well. Haley Elementary, we're replacing the roof on that building. It's approximately halfway done. Uh, it is right where we anticipated being at this time of the summer, so it is moving along well, and it will be nearing completion when school starts, but not quite complete. The, the two weeks earlier start of school kind of interrupted our schedule a little bit, but I, I visited with the contractor today about creating a plan to accommodate uh, open house and start a school so that we're out of their way as much as possible. At Hawk Alternative High School, uh, we made some repairs and refinished the gym floor at that building so it, it is fully functional and ready for the, those students to use for their PE programs. At Oak Ridge High School, uh, we're in the process of refreshing their track so it is lacking stripes but it is on schedule and waiting the appropriate time to apply the new paint on the stripes for that track. At Washington Junior High, we refinished the, the main gym of that campus. It is complete, and uh, it's in its curing time right now, so we'll be able to let students on it again here in the next week or so. At the Woodlands High School, we have recently refinished their tennis courts, so that uh, project is uh, complete and being verified by our design team uh, in the next week or so. Now, at Knox Junior High, which is a, a, another contract, just to clarify, uh, we're adding the uh, science classroom additions. That project is scheduled to be complete and ready for students in August. Uh, it is where we would anticipate it being. It is a tight schedule, but it is, is currently on schedule. Uh, we're installing this, the casework and the lab, lab equipment uh, now. The classrooms are coming together. The ceiling grid's in. We're working with our mains department over the next week or so to close up our ceilings and cover up all the infrastructure. So we're, everything is complete. We're working on details so that we can start applying the finishes and put the floors and everything else in. Mr. At, Foster, yes, sir. Sorry to interrupt. The roof on the gym at Knox, was that also in, in the process, whatever it came with that? Uh, the roof on the gym at Knox is a separate, separate. item, <clears throat> but it is also in process. We discussed some uh, remedies with the roofing manufacturer today, as a matter of fact. So we, we're moving that process forward, hopefully, to have everything ready before the first open house at Knox so that we can use use the gyms without having any, any issues with uh, roof leaks. Moving on to our field house, uh, the, the overall building envelope is, is essentially done. What we're looking at is the installation of the plaster ceilings for the showers and all the other wet areas that go along with the locker room facility. So it, it looks funny, but it is right where we would expect it to be at this time uh, of the project. At our transportation facility, the uh, existing building has been added on, so we created more space for our, our drivers to, to be during the day in their in their cycles between their bus morning and afternoon bus routes. Uh, the photograph doesn't capture it, but this morning they placed the concrete around the front of that building. So now we're down to small amounts of utility infill in the concrete parking lots, and it is on schedule as we would anticipate it. We've also, as part of this project, expanded the parking area to accommodate the increased volume we're seeing. And that pr the concrete is placed, we're just waiting for it to cure so we can apply the striping to it and it'll uh, stick the way it's supposed to. Our safety and security project, I have a picture for you. Uh, the, most of this project is above the ceilings where you can't see anything. Uh, what we have for you today is the, the, the vestibule uh, installation for Travis Intermediate. So this is uh, obviously there's a, a man working on it currently, but this is the vestibule that we're creating uh, around the district oh, yes. to give our uh, reception staff some, some more security as they entertain and service our clients and our students over the course of the school year. Moving on to Lucille Bradley Elementary School. This project is complete. It's substantially complete. Right. We took possession of it officially on June 28th. So it is currently in a, what we would consider a finished standpoint on the inside. And we've been populating it with furniture. Our purchasing department began delivering their furniture a couple weeks ago and it is becoming set up and usable. Uh, and we'll be ready for our staff when, when they come back to school. 
at Grand Oaks High School. The project is proceeding as we would anticipate. It is scheduled to open in August of 2018. So you can see the main uh, focus is now drawing in the perimeter of the building. Uh, you can see the uh, the brickwork is just starting to become more visible as you drive by it on the Grand Parkway. It is starting to take its personality on. The athletic venues are also one of the major scopes of work that's going on. So you're seeing the bleachers, the light stands, the, the other things that make the baseball, softball, football, and the other, other athletic venues that we've got. Uh, on the back end of the building, on the fine arts section, where we've got the gyms and the other athletics areas, we're, we're starting to see all the tall work on the interior start to take place. At Flex 18, this is what Dr. Noll promised you I'd show you some pictures of. Uh, this building is on schedule, scheduled to open in August at the same time Grand Oaks opens. Uh, as you can see, we're making uh, great progress. Uh, we consider this project still in the dirt. Uh, we go, we begin to go vertical in August. Uh, structural steel and those elements that take it out of the ground, vertical, uh, start arriving on the 1st of August, and they'll start going up almost immediately upon arriving on site. Conroe High School, this is addition renovation project across the street where our main focus is creating a traffic flow through the campus to allow the expansion of the building which will allow us to renovate the mechanical and electrical systems in the, in the main campus. So the process here is to create uh, a, a bus loop around the new building and I'm happy to report it is on schedule. We've been working uh, side by side with the city and they've been very helpful in, in inspections and in working with us to make sure we get what we need done correctly. Uh, what you're looking at here is the actual preparation for the subgrade before we put in the asphalt roadway around the building. Uh, so it is actually moving along uh, very well. Uh, alongside of that, we're putting in the infrastructure for the new building and future expansions uh, and to help us renovate the, uh, the main mechanical systems of the building. You're looking at the piping infrastructure, which is underground, from this next spot, which is the <coughs> central plant. Uh, to create a more energy efficient mechanical system for that building. We're combining in one location the chillers and the boilers and the pumps and everything that will supply the heating and cooling for that for that campus in one location. And all those pipes that we, we've just shown you are all headed back to this, this particular area. And that is our update. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. Item 5A, financial reports. Mr. Rice, please. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of June. <clears throat> These statements will include our general fund, our debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. Our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. Each month, we like to look at our cash and investments. And concentrating here on the general fund, you see we have cash on hand of $500. Bank deposits of $322,000. Investments in the state pools of $80 million. Our short-term investments, less than one year, $74 million. Our investments with TCG Investment Advisors, $51 million for a total cash and investments of $206 million. Then always we like to track our property tax collection. And as you can see, we're ahead of where we were last year, so we're very confident we're going to reach 100% collections. <clears throat> The next statement we'll look at this evening is the income statement. It includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balance. The revenues are broken down into three categories. They are local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal <coughs> program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, you can see that property taxes is the largest generator of revenues in the general fund and debt service fund, food sales and child nutrition, and premium contributions and self-funded insurance. We can also look at our expenditures by major category for each one of the funds. Our fund balance projection for the general fund, no change from last month, uh, an increase of about $8.9 million. Same for debt service, we're projecting an increase of about 4.6, that's the same as last month. And child nutrition, an increase of about $692,000. Good news on self-funded insurance. We got back on track in, in June. Our total, uh, our total revenues are 
$3.77 million in expenses of $3.67 million, giving us revenues over expenses of $102,000, so a good month. Uh, total for the year, we have total revenues of $37.6 million, total expenses of $34.3 million, leaving us revenues over expenses of about $3.3 million. So the fund looks like it's performing very well. Got one more month for the summer, or two more months, so we're hoping. We're hoping. Uh, participation at the wellness centers uh, for the month of June, we had 453 visits, so uh, good there. Our North County facility opened. We had a, roughly 20 to 25 visits there, so it's starting to get going, so we're excited about that. Uh, just on, on some other news, just, just for your information, our contract with Memorial Hermann includes performance clauses based on the ACO portion of our health plan. And based on our, our claims for last year, they did not meet the performance targets. So we will be receiving a rebate from Memorial Hermann of about a million dollars for that performance. So, so good news on that front. So you'll have an uh, over revenue over expenses of over the $4 million, not including next month, next two months? Yes, sir. How much did we fund that last year? How much was it that we funded the uh, self-funded insurance piece? I know we Transfer. How oh, how much did we transfer? Uh, it was roughly two and a half million, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But Mr. Guys, mm -hmm. is it is it not true that uh, claims are, are 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 trailing, so that the the negative 152 month May mm -hmm. could actually be claims from spring break. Correct. And summer claims which could trickle naturally over. gravitate towards the holidays for their surgeries and like. You know, <coughs> and and so we've got uh, you know May of June and July maybe showing up in September and October. Yeah. So we're not out. Probably about a three month lag on that on those not, claims. I mean, yeah. it's not quite as big as it looks possibly. Correct. Let's put it that way. Correct. Okay. It's definitely better than it has been in the past. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our, invest, our investments for the month of June, we had a par value of $429 million. Uh, our pools were yielding about 1.1%. Our short-term investments, once again, less than uh, one year, was 1.28%. Uh, our investments with TCG Investment Advisors, 1.21%. Our combined portfolio is 1.14%. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, was just over 1%. That's okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I have one quick question, Mr. Rice. Yes, the the pools, the investment earnings on the pools. Mm -hmm. How much have you seen that rise, say, in the last six months? It's been significant. Oh, business. significant. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah uh, I mean, forty basis points, or at the, more, more than probably that? seventy-five basis points. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. been considerable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, and item 8A, <clears throat> accept information on board policy manual update 108. This is Galanis, please. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. This is Bush, members of the board. This is a really, really dull uh, policy manual update. I, I struggled to try to find something clever or funny to say about it, but it's just boring. Um, as you can see, it's, there's not a lot of substance to any of the changes. There's terminology changes to align with administrative rules. Um, those are the kind of the E-series changes. Um, there's a clarification to our credit by exam that the board does have to approve the examinations that are given for that. Uh, they're deleting some old language from old laws that are no longer applicable. Changes to campus charters, we don't have one, so I doubt you paid a whole lot of attention to that. <laughs> um, we did uh, make some changes to DH. Um, I would love to say that it was in anticipation of new law that was passed. It just kind of turns out it was fortuitous. Um, we had um, ha employees that got into trouble outside of work report to their supervisors if that had happened. We are pulling that back and having them report to HR instead um, because we had a little concern about the information making it to HR. Turns out that um, th there's a new state law that's all encompassing, but it requires principals within seven days to tell the superintendent of any criminal activity engaged, and it kind of saves them from having to worry about that because people should be going directly to HR. And then finally, um, the last policy, GKB, they just changed the name so that it would be a standard policy so that we don't have to pay extra for it anymore. So it was very kind of them. And so that is your update 108, and you'll be asked to adopt these um, in August. Wonderful. Okay. Motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. Thank you very much. Time is now 633. <coughs>